The first television set was fired up in the 1920s, after basically being in development since the mid-1800s. Of course, movies were still being created and viewed since the 1890s using different means, but it wasn't until the late 1920s when live broadcast television programming began. The first American news broadcast was in 1930. Since then, we have been heavily brainwashed and dumbed down, and now there are more TVs than people in the average American household. The same goes for Canada, the United Kingdom, and many other countries. If we're not watching TV on our TV, then we're watching it on our phones, our tablets, our computers. We're constantly saturated in mainstream media content and subjected to numerous techniques for mental conditioning. The following video is an attempt at helping you understand some of these techniques. Being aware of what's happening and fully acknowledging it is the only way to free yourself from it. This is ODD TV. Thanks for watching. Psychological warfare has been waged against America for much of this century. This war for the mind of the public has been facilitated by the emergence of mass media and the transformation of American education by behavioral psychologists. In the book 1984, George Orwell warned that people were in danger of losing their human qualities and freedom of mind without being aware of it while it was happening because of psychological, emotional, and intellectual manipulation. Mind control. The most effective way to protect yourself from subconscious manipulation is by being aware of how it works. What the conscious mind believes, the subconscious acts on. It works like programming a computer. Information is fed into a computer, and the computer acts on it. However, if the information fed into the computer is wrong, it still acts on it. If a person believes something that is not true, the memory banks of the subconscious mind do not correct the error, but act on it. The theory of cognitive dissonance holds that the mind automatically and involuntarily rejects information not in line with previously accepted thoughts and beliefs. Watching television often produces an altered state of consciousness. Though not consciously perceived, the television screen, while appearing static, actually flickers. Any repeating light or sound pattern can lead you into an altered state. A hypnotist uses pattern speech by varying the pacing and inflection of his voice to induce the state of mind in his subject. It is in this state of mind where one is the most receptive to mental programming. Whether or not the information takes hold in the mind depends on two factors. Trust in the source of the information and repetition of the message. Trust in the source of the information induces acceptance of the message as true, even if it is not understood. Repetition of the message embeds it in the subconscious so that acceptance of its truth and accuracy becomes a conditioned response. Thus, this information will be accepted as true without thinking about it whenever it is presented again. The flicker rate on the television is very, very important. It was timed to be so many cycles per second and, and it actually just meets with the brain patterns for an alpha state. Our, when our brain sees it through our eyes, we, we start to adopt that flicker rate in our, in our mind and we go into a deep alpha state. Watch children and watch their mouths. They, they drop open. Uh, they won't hear their parents talking. Uh, they're, they're hypnotized in fact. Uh, why would they give that particular flicker rate when they could have chosen of a whole variety of flicker rates. It wasn't an essential thing to have. So it was done for a purpose. It was meant to be hypnotic. It was meant to be used as a tool of propaganda and indoctrination, uh, even through the guise of entertainment and so on. It also was to create a new society because they were the avant-garde 
as I say, leading a sexual revolution through drama, through little documentaries, um, fiction, non-fiction, all combines. Once again, back to Plato, the audience see what they see. Uh, you understand that it's even worked out towards different age groups. There's something on for everybody, everybody's age group. Each age group is actually being updated as well, even the elderly ones, into new ways of thinking or seeing things. But the target mainly was for youngsters. If we take one of the world's experts on propaganda, who is Jax um, uh, Elal, who wrote extensively on how the mind works and how all entertainment, he said, that has to do with government programs such as police, detective stories, detective series, which contain little human dramas to, as the hook that you identify with to make you watch the whole story. The child gets kidnapped, detective goes on a hunt, he goes through hell and, and what fire uh, to get that child back. Um, you identify with the hero for, if you're a male, you identify with the heroine if you're female. And that's the hoop to get you to watch them. But what he said was all dramas to do with police or even the military in movies are pure propaganda. Pure propaganda. The human story is just the, the bait to make you watch through it to get you to identify with it. Because once again, there's always a message left somewhere in the movie. It might even be a message that's against your own morality. It could be where the cop, for instance, um, uh, does uh, sleep with this beautiful woman while his wife was at home, and it's all part of the story, and even tell you why he did this, he was feeling down that day, blah, blah, blah. And so you've just again altered your viewpoints on how you yourself might behave in that situation. And that sometimes that, can, that kind of thing can be justified. That's how you're downloaded through entertainment. It's there to alter and direct and always upgrade into another step of the direction that the entire culture for someone else's purpose. Let's talk about the, the effects of the Alpha State first of all. Recent articles I've even read on the air from various science uh, studies show you that, that even when you switch off television, you remain in that alpha state for maybe 45 minutes to an hour, sometimes longer, depending on how long you've been watching it. With high definition, it's, again, why, why would a president of a country mandate that all TVs had to go high definition? Is it because he really cares so much about your happiness? And he wants better quality for you. Or is there another reason for it? Well, I'm sure the, the effects of the old flicker rates and, and what, what it did will also be incorporated in high definition, but with even more uh, added benefits for bringing you into a complete hypnotic state. How do you wake someone up who's addicted to television? Uh, you can't. Very, very simple. You can't get your daily brainwashing uh, where literally it's bypassing uh, any consciousness in the person. You can't take that every day and still try to wake up and learn at the same time. Uh, I've known people who've gone through complete withdrawal from television and gone into depressions because their, their entire routine is, is, is broken. They also have time on their hands, uh, which is a big aspect of control, remember, too. Uh, if you can take time away from a person who can think for themselves, who might say, oh, I'll go and read a book, I'll go and study something, or if you can take that time away from them and have them mesmerized in front of a television set, then you'll keep them dumb, stupid, compliant, and, and going along with the system. I always advise to people, if you know someone who's watching TV, um, it's quite simple to find out where they are mentally, uh, psychologically, uh, in, the, in the understanding of things. You can ask them a few simple questions. If they give you standard television answers, uh, forget it. Simple as that, forget it. If, if you see some spark of, of their own opinion coming in, there's maybe a chance you can do something with them. But uh, you cannot get off. You see, television um, it can be classified as a drug. People think that hypnosis is some mysterious, esoteric thing, and it's not. It's just simply a mental transaction in which a person has focused their attention, they've stopped being critical, and they're more open to suggestion.
we're going to start by playing the national anthem, which was the sign-off on television stations across the nation back in the 1960s. Our national anthem. Now we're going to go ahead and watch this national anthem again, only this time we're going to watch it slowed way down. Tell me if you notice anything different from the last time you watched it. Did you see the letters change at the bottom? Let's watch it again in even slower frame by frame motion. happens so quickly you can barely see it but you aren't meant to physically literally see it you are meant to subconsciously see it it is meant to go into the subconscious and implant itself into your brain on a subconscious level and this continues throughout this entire national anthem and it becomes basically like the script for the movie they live This video was shown signing off of television programming for the day uh, throughout the 60s and we know that during that time is the same exact time that the Mass Mind Control MK Ultra project, the government covert operation was going on in the United States. They were carrying it out on the American people and that's been admitted. The CIA admitted it in what 1970? and there's even a speech where Bill Clinton apologized for it in 1995. So this is all on record. This is not this is not a debunked video by any means. In fact, everything I've looked up on this video has only gone to show that it is in fact a real video that was in fact shown 
on national television networks throughout the country in the 1960s. And if you guys think they're not using this kind of programming today, I assure you that they are. It's just gotten much, much more sophisticated.